Hello everyone and welcome to uh, this video which is going to be the pre-lab video for the spectroscopic determination of nickel 2. So uh, what you're going to be doing today is you are going to be making four standard solutions and then you're going to be using those standard solutions plus a uh, blank to help you create Beer's Law plot. And I'll talk about that or I'll have another video. It won't be me talking, but um, I'll have another video on uh, the Bears, uh, Bears Law and uh, an analysis of the data. Uh, but in this, I just want to go over fairly quickly the procedures for the lab so everyone is clear what to do when you walk into the lab. Um, so the first thing, you're going to be walk, working in groups. So you're going to be in groups of five, uh, depending on who shows up, four or five. Uh, but if everyone shows up, you'll be in groups of five. And everyone is going to be responsible for making an, uh, a, a, a standard solution. <clears throat> okay, so in the standard solutions, as I said, are going to be used for Beer's Law Plot. So everyone, everyone in the group will be responsible for making a particular um, <clears throat> standard. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, each of you will also get an unknown. Uh, so you're going to have every student, this is together in a group, but every student is responsible for getting the uh, data of their unknown uh, as well. So <clears throat> this is going to be kind of a group, uh, but it's also going to be individual because each individual is going to have their unknown um, and they're going to have their own report to write and submit and all that stuff. Um, even though it is uh, a group um, uh, project, uh, we, um, we're going to work together. Uh, it, you're going to work separately on your unknown. You can work together and help each other, but um, it'll be your un own unknown, your own lab report. All right, so, um, so before lab, what I need you to do before lab is to determine the volumes of all the stock, of, of the stock solutions. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the volumes of the stock solution that you will need to create each of the standards. So there's four standards. Each standard is going to have a different concentration. The stock solution is going to have one concentration. The stock solution concentration is 0 0.20 molar. So you're going to make that stock solution. So um, depending on what standard you are assigned or what standard you choose, right, depending on how you do it with your groups. Um, uh, you're going to have to figure out, well, how much volume of my stock solution do I need in order to make my standard, right? So before that, you're going to have to figure out those volumes. So here are the, the molarities of each of the stock solutions. So you, you need a 0 0.160 molar stock solution, um, um, uh, standard solution. You need a 0 0.120 molar standard solution. You need a 0 0.080 molar standard solution. And you need a 0 0.040 molar standard solution. So how are you going to do that? Well, if you know the molarity, the concentration of your stock solution, and you know the molarities of your, of your uh, standards that you need, um, well, then you also need the, the volumes and the volume that you are going to make is 25 milliliters. So you're going to have to use what is called a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. So you can see that there. This is a pretty small little tiny flask. So using my head as a, as a, uh, something to compare to. So, or my hand, if that's better. Um, so, 25 milliliters. So, every standard has 20, it's 25 milliliters. So, there's your volume of the standard. So, the only thing you need to find is the volume of the uh, stock solution you need to start with. And that's where M1V1 equals M2V2 comes in. So, you're going to have to go back and use that. So, if you don't remember that, Go back to the video I have on M1V1 equals M2V2. It's in the book. It's under dilutions, right? So uh, go back and use that. But 
Um, but it should be clear that if you, whatever your M1, so M1 would be the starting molarity of the stock solution. So we know that volume one is the volume of the stock solution you need. Um, uh, mo, mo, M2 is the molarity of the standard. Well, that there, there's the standard right there. And the volume of the standard is always 25 milliliters. So you can solve the equation. Okay, so, um, so once you have figured out your volumes of the stand of the stock solution you need, um, it's now time to go get your stock solution. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a 50 milliliter beaker. So it's the tiny beaker, right? So as comparison, you have it's a tiny, tiny beaker, 50 milliliter beaker. So get the 50 milliliter beaker to get the uh, nickel two stock solution. So again, these volumes are going to be pretty small. So your um, your 50 milliliter beaker should be enough. You um, <clears throat> probably want to get it a little bit more uh, than the uh, stock solution. Well, actually, you want to get a few, a bit more. Probably, uh, let's see, probably three, three or four times more. Because remember, you're going to be using a pipette, and when you use a pipette. You're going to have to um, uh, prep the pipette. You're going to have to prime or condition the pipette before using it. So remember before, remember when you use your pipette, you had to condition it, fill it up uh, part of the way, about one-fifth of the way into the bulb, and then roll it around. So please review the video from before where, we, where I went over that last time. Um, I think that was that was the Coke lab. So go back and review that part of the Coke lab video. Um, so you got your 50 milliliter beaker. You're gonna go get the volume you need. You're going to prime your pipette. You're going and again th prime it three times. When you're done priming, then you're going to use the pipette to get the volume of whatever uh, standard that it is yours to get. Remember, each individual in the group will be assigned a standard and it's their job in the group to get the standard. Um, and remember, it's really important to get the standards right because you're going to use this for Beer's Law and Beer's Law is going to be used to determine the concentration of your unknown. Your grade is in part based on how close and accurate you get to the actual value of the concentration of your unknown. So you need to <clears throat> Do this well. Um, so you're going to prepare your 25 milliliters of your standards. Everyone prepares their standards. You have four standards. You're going to use the appropriate pipette. So if you need, to, if your if your volume is five milliliters, you're going to have to use a five milliliter pipette. If it's 15 milliliters, you need to use a 15 milliliter pipette. If it's 20 milliliters, you need a 20 milliliter pipette, and so on. Right. So. Whatever whatever uh, standard you are chosen to do or whatever one you are assigned to do, um, you already have the volumes made up, right? So you already calculated the volumes that you need. Um, so you just need to find that pipette, okay? Um, you're going to prepare that 25 milliliter uh, in a volumetric flask, that 25 milliliter vol volumetric flask. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to use your pipette. You're going to take uh, that pipette, an aliquot, get an aliquot of the nickel, uh, nickel two solution. Um, and then you're gonna transfer that to your, your 25 milliliter uh, volumetric flask. So what you're gonna do is, you're going to fill put whatever volume in, in there. So you're gonna use your pipette. So you're gonna take the pipette to your 50 milliliter beaker you're going to uh, take in whatever the amount, remember the meniscus of the, the, um, the solution that you are taking in, the two, nickel two um, solution. Uh, you're gonna take it into the pipette and remember the bottom of the meniscus should be at that line. There's only one line, so you need to make sure it's on that line. And when it's on that line, remember that the volume in there is to two decimal places. So if you got a five milliliter pipette, then it'll be 5.00 uh, 
milliliters, not five milliliters. If it's a 10 milliliter pipette, then it will be five point, uh, it'll be uh, 10.00 and so on. So you're gonna then, once you get that 10 milliliters or five milliliters of your nickel to uh, stock solution, you're going to then transfer it into your 25 milliliter um, graduated flask here, graduated, so not graduated, sorry, your volumetric flask here. Um, now, once it's in there, the only thing you have to do is dilute it, right? So you need to add DI water. So, but be careful, you only want to add enough DI water so that it's up to the line. Remember, the meniscus, bottom of the meniscus should be on the line, right? If you, this is where you really need to be careful because if you go over, you've, you've messed it up and you got to start over. So when you get really close, you probably want to add drop by drop, right? Use your, uh, use your water bottle um, or use, use a pipette or, or, um, or a, a disposable pipette to add drop by drop. Um, but you want to be very careful not to get it over, over the line. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to mix it up. So once it's you've got enough water in there to uh, get it up to the line, you're going to mix it, make sure it's really well mixed, and then uh, you're going to save it for the for the next part, which is going to be uh, getting your data for the Beer's Law uh, plot. Okay, <clears throat> so. So, uh, so I said you're going to dilute it carefully to the mark. Uh, show your dilution calculations in the lab notebook. So remember there's a calculation sections. So after your data table, you should have in your data table space for calculated values, right? So that's where your calculations are going to come in. <clears throat> the next section is going to be uh, your calculation section. So that should be separate from the data. I don't want it done on the same page. So just have it as a different section. Um, you can mark it off on the same page, but I don't want like column, column. I just want, so section, so you have your data tables and underneath you're going to have a subsection, label it calculations, and then underneath you're going to do whatever sample calculations you're going to do. And so that's where I want you to show uh, your calculations for the um, dilution. How did you get dilution of your, of your standard? Okay, then when, when everyone has got their un, uh, standards done, you've got your four standards. So you're gonna have four of these. And then everyone's gonna obtain an unknown from me, your professor. Uh, you're gonna record the unknown number in your lab notebook. And then the next thing you're going to do I don't know if you can read this. Let me bring it over a little bit. Let me bring this over here. Maybe this will be helpful. That's probably better. <clears throat> okay. So. You're going to use calipers to find the width of nine to ten dust tubes, and you're going to calculate the average. So, in the Beer's Law plot equation, you need to know the path distance. That's your uh, width of your um, your test tube or cuvette, um, whichever you want to call it. Um, so, uh, if you've never used calipers before, I'll have a video on how to use calipers, how to read. The calipers. I'll have a, a couple of different videos on how to do that because it depends on what caliper you get and how to read it. Um, so then you're going to use the average in your calculation. So uh, once you get the average, um, someone in your group you can like have them responsible for doing that. Maybe um, if you have a fifth person in the group, they can do that um, while others are doing the standards. Uh, or whoever finishes their standards first can can do this, okay? Um, so in the next video, I will continue this uh, in uh, part two of this video.